Okay, now uh, this is part two of the uh, easy sample um, series. This is the second and last part. And in this part, uh, in part one, we already made the chops that we wanted to use. And in this part, I'm going to put them together with a drum beat. And to remind you, we're going for like an East Coast slash MPC style of uh, sampled beat. Now, obviously, you can do anything on an MPC. I'm not trying to uh, generalize it. All MPC beats are going to sound like like this one, but the style I'm going for, I think you'll recognize, uh, is kind of a predominant style coming up through the '90s. Um, and since a lot of producers in hip hop use the MPC, that's kind of why I've labeled it that way. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, bring up the um, the step sequencer. And uh, those of you who have seen my tutorials in the past know I like working in uh, two-bar um, patterns. So what you're looking at is a basic two-bar pattern. I've got my kick, my snare, and my hi-hat. And this is kind of a default setting. It's not, uh, this is not the beat we're going to use. We're going to actually change it a little bit. Um, but uh, these are the samples we're going to use. And then um, what I'm going to do is add some swing or also known as shuffle um, to the uh, to the beat so for example um, some of you may not know what swing or shuffle is so I'm gonna explain it to you if I if I was to take let's say just the hi-hat line which is just every other note every other tick on the on the pattern on the uh, step sequencer right here and fill it in completely that's what I'm gonna do now, if we numbered these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc., all the way to the end of the pattern, uh, we'd have evens and odds. Okay, so evens would be, you know, obviously this one, this. One, I mean, odds would be this one, this one, etc. Every like every other one starting with the first one. Evens would be every other one starting with the second one. What swing? or shuffle, it's also known as shuffle, what that does is that takes the even numbered ones and it shuffles or shifts them over in time so that they play a little bit later. And to demonstrate that, let's take a listen to how this particular uh, pattern sounds by itself or how this particular hat line sounds by itself with no swing on it at all. Listen. Okay, so it's all the same. It's tick, 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 tick. You know, it's just constant, no differentiation in 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 uh, note length or or timing at all. Now I'm going to turn the swing to 50%. Now 50% in FL Studio may not be 50% in other um, software or hardware um, sequencers. So, you know, if your whatever you're using doesn't sound the same at 50. 50% um, try it more or less because it may not e equal the, s the same setting but let's listen to it now remember before it was all equal it was tick 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 just straight through now let's listen to it so now it's got that shuffle to it it's tick to tick to tick to tick to tick to tick it's different and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna take advantage of that in this case um, we're not going to hear any any of that on the hat, and we're not going to hear any of that on the snare, uh, but we will hear it on the kick drum because what I'm going to do is put right here in these new buttons that I'm highlighting. Those are all going to be shifted over a little bit, and um, and then we'll hear what, what the beat's going to sound. It's going to kind of have a little East Coast bounce to it. Take a listen. Okay, so now it's a very basic beat, nothing spectacular about it, but believe it or not, this beat that you're looking at right now uh, could be applied to, you could apply samples to it, and it's going to basically fit into almost anything uh, that you throw at it, uh, because it's, it's so basic. And then you could, you know, 
start with something real simple like this and then go ahead and add all kinds of other flavors to it later on. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to bring up the playlist and I'm going to set this pattern to play in the playlist. And then I'm going to go to the next pattern, uh, which is here. And I'm going to make this a two bar pattern. And then um, I'm going to drop the uh, the samples we're going to use. So let's go get the first sample, which was the intro. Okay, and then hopefully that's loud enough. Let's drag it over here, and we dropped it on there. And then I want this to play, uh, you know, through the whole two bars. So I'm just going to highlight that. Now, here's the part where it gets interesting, because I want this to play across two bars. So if I play it right now as is, let's hear what it sounds like. Well, it might help if I... I like that pattern. Okay, so now let's hear what it sounds like with the beat. Doesn't really fit. But when we bring up the channel settings for this thing, we can do a couple of things with it. We got we have a lot of uh options to work with, but what we're going to really concentrate on is the time stretching. So what we're going to do is we're going to say see this time knob here? We're going to say right click on it and we know that this is two bars of a, a chop because I counted off those eight beats before and that's two bars. So I'm going to set it to two bars. Now by setting it to two bars, it's now stretched itself so that it will play perfectly uh, in this pattern. And now if we listen to it with the drums... And there it is, perfectly uh, stretched. Uh, now we'll go get the next sound. And the next sound was this like breakdown part. Uh, actually, we won't, we won't get the breakdown yet. We'll get the, uh, the violin hits, this part. We'll put that part in there. And then maybe we'll set that to hit like on every, uh, every other beat like that. Let's just hear what it sounds like. But let's go in. Remember, we need to stretch this because we want to. We already know how long it is, and we want it to kind of fit. So we know this is one beat long. So we'll tell it to play at one beat, and we're going to take a listen. Now, what I hear is that these two parts are not exactly in tune with each other. And because of that, I can hear what's called uh, dissonance, which is where when two sounds are not like in the same frequency, uh, they kind of uh, they kind of fight each other and create like you know this ugly effect because they're not in tune. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first sound and I'm going to tell it to use a time stretching elastic tonal. And what that's going to do is that's going to play that sample at the original pitch. But it's still going to be stretched across what I've set the time knob to. So if we listen to it, uh, let me turn this off one more time. Here's the original. And then here's how it is stretched without the uh, elastic on it. So you can hear it's playing faster and it's also playing in a higher pitch. But when I set this tonal, it's going to play faster, but it's not going to sound higher pitched. Listen. So you heard that slower part that kicked in. That's because I played the original sample now. If you've got a, a decent ear, you can hear they were both exactly in the same pitch, but one was playing faster, and that's the one that we're putting in, we've stretched in our sample. So now that's set to tonal. I'm going to set my other sample to tonal, and now both of these are going to be in key with each other because they're in the original key. Oh, and then the other thing was I told you that at the end of this sample, there's this like little breath right here that I want to get rid of. 
So I'm just going to use the out knob here and you can see I can then I can then trim that. And it's still there. Now I could go in with an audio editor like Adobe or Audacity, I mean with uh, Audition or Audacity or something else and 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 fade that out or silence that out if I wanted to. Uh, I don't want to right now. I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Um, but if I wanted to be perfect about it, I would I would probably do it that way. Okay, so anyway, so now uh, I told you that everything should be in tune. So let's take a listen to it now. Okay, so that long sample continues to play unless I stop the... Uh, hit the stop button twice but there we go okay so now let's find that breakdown part um, we'll put that in there so that's the breakdown part and actually on this one um, I'm gonna make a copy of pattern 2 and then I'm gonna put the breakdown part in in, in here in pattern 3 because I'm going to let the drums play again, and we'll play pattern three on the second two down here. And then that breakdown, if you remember, was two beats long. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stretch it to two beats. I'm going to resample it to tonal. And then I'm going to, uh, since I know it's two beats, I'm going to play it right here. Take that one out. And then this is going to play that breakdown part right at the last two beats which would then lead us back to the beginning again and uh, hopefully it'll it'll sound uh, nicer um, so let's let's hear the whole the whole four bars uh, as they are and see how it sounds Okay, so everything's in time, everything's in tune. Maybe this is not the greatest sample beat you've ever heard. I can ag I can agree with that. I can understand that. I don't I'm not trying to make a uh, a hit here. I'm just trying to explain the techniques. Okay, so there we have basically uh let's just kind of recap what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a a simple drum beat. We've used some swing, thrown some kicks in the swing location so that it has a nice East Coast bounce to it. That's given us kind of the backbone that we're dealing with. And with regards to our samples, we've chopped everything in pretty much even increments as far as bars go. It's either like one full beat, two full beats, a measure, one bar, uh, two bars in this case of the of this intro part, which was two bars long. If we and, and this is the important part, if you cut the thing properly. You don't need to to worry about doing any kind of, you know, how many, uh, you know, how many beats is it, uh, or how many seconds is it? It's thirty two point six two five seconds. You don't need to worry about that. I've seen tutorials, and I'm not trying to knock on them, where they're writing this stuff down, or they're they're copying and pasting these values back and forth when they're time stretching, and you don't need to do that. All you need to do is learn how to count your beats, cut on the beats. And just throw them in here, and you're and you're good to go. And like I said, if you've got a one hit or a one shot where you don't really care about how many beats it is, because it's just a one shot, like a snare or a, or a, a single kick or a single hat, um, you know that's fine. You, then you don't need to worry about cutting it on it on an even even time. But if you do cut on even time, you all you have to do is tell FL Studio, hey, this is how long it is. You do the stretching for me. I don't have to do any of that math and calculation and whatever other crap, uh, you know, is involved with that. It, it does it all for you. Uh, also, if you keep it tonal, that keeps all the samples uh, in the same tone, in the same key. Now, if you're going for the chipmunk effect, um, then there's more that you have to do to get it to the chipmunk effect. Um and still keep everything in, in tune. What you would do, basically what you would do, is you would make it tonal, 
and then you would adjust the pitch to where you want it to be. Um, and by doing that, if you set the pitch on all of your samples to the same value, then they'll still be in tune, but they'll still be, you know, chip monkey if you want them that way or, or not. It's up to you. Uh, but that might be something for another tutorial. Okay, so, and then finally, um, the last thing we did was we just basically uh, just threw it all together. Everything's on beats, you know. I mean, I didn't have to do much tweaking. I like this isn't on some off beat here. Uh, so finally, everything's all together. We've got our beat done. We could do more with this. Uh, if you really wanted to, uh, you could, for example, apply some lo-fi to the drums, which would make the drums sound, you know, uh, maybe more like they were sampled. Um, there are lo-fi plugins that you could use. MDA makes one. If you if you look for MDA degrade, um, there that's a plugin that you can use to kind of uh, make sound a clean sound sound dirty. Um, that you could make it sound like it's coming from a 12-bit sampler instead of a, you know, a 16-bit sample. Um, you know, really grimy up your drums if you wanted to. You could also use something from Isotope, which is free, called Vinyl. And that will make your um, sounds come through as though they were being played on a record player. It'll add like little dust clicks. And if you wanted to, you could add like scratches and skips and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, and that's free. So it's MDA Degrade. It's free. Uh, and is Isotope Vinyl. It's spelled I-Z-O-T-O-P-E, vinyl, and that's free. So both of those would help you if you really wanted to get a, a, a close to an authentic, old-school sampled beat. Um, there are also MPC templates, quantized templates, if you wanted to, to use those. Uh, I'm probably going to cover quantization in another tutorial, and maybe I'll show those there. But those are floating around if you can get your hands on them. Um, for FL Studio and uh, so there's a lot you can do I've only showed you the tip of the iceberg um, and from here you let your creativity take you to uh, to higher places and in the meantime uh, this is NFX I'm signing out and I will catch you guys in the next tutorial